Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Good evening and welcome to As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. Thank you so much for checking in and, and watching again this month. My name is Andrea Judici and I am the host. I guess I'm the director too, which is kind of cool. And um, I have with me my guide dog whose name I will not use. As always, I do that for um, our safety as a team and his focus as a working dog. <clears throat> welcome back to the second half of When Your House is Smarter Than You Are. And I have with me Chris Thompson again. I, at our last show, we got so excited that I decided that we were going to do a remote taping. And I didn't even ask the people behind the cameras if that was okay. I just made the decision and then presented to them live on the show. And they rallied and did it. So yay for all of you um, behind the camera. And Chris, thank you again for being an expert on the smart home. I know that you have so much to share today. I'm going to do everything in my power not to talk and just let you go run with it and tell us everything you can in the time that we have. Thanks so much for coming back. Thank you for having me again. I, I love demonstrating this, so this is great. Feel free to ask any questions you may have. Yeah, my name is Chris Thompson. I am the coordinator here at the Needs Center in Hartford. And um, so, yeah, I'll give a little bit of a background on myself. Um, I have a degree in computer science and my uh, education, I mean, I'm sorry, my work experience is in information technology. I came on board at the Needs Center uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, I've been a part of helping get the smart home up and running, uh, researching the technology, staying on top of it, and uh, kind of demonstrating it, which I love doing. So thanks again, and thanks again for doing this remotely. And I guess the first thing I'll kind of demonstrate now is the ring doorbell, which is always a huge hit here. And a lot of you have probably already seen the commercials for it, but basically it's a, it's a Wi-Fi video, kind of a two-way audio intercom. And it's, this is actually battery operated. So you don't have to wire it. You can mount it over your existing doorbell, or there is a way you can actually wire it into where your old doorbell used to be. So basically, you install it, it's rechargeable too, and it's got an HD camera on it. And I'll actually try to demonstrate it on the screen. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but we'll see what happens. So basically someone comes up and presses the doorbell, and you will be notified on your smart device or phone no matter where you are. So we'll see if I can pull it up here. And so someone will push the so this is great for someone who might have a mobility issue. This is great for a, a whole range of disabilities. So someone does not have to move, and they can see exactly who is at their door. So someone outside will press the doorbell, if it works, which is not mounted, so it may not. Actually, yeah, it'll say someone's at your front door, and you press to answer it. And it should bring, there, there I am. I don't know if you can actually see this on the camera but I can see myself on the ring doorbell and on my phone and on the screen, so I'm kind of everywhere right now. But, but you could say, hello, who is it? See who's there, they could tell you uh, it's UPS. Just say, leave the package on the doorstep. Or if you have a smart lock, you could unlock the smart lock remotely. They can leave the package in the door, and when they leave, you can lock the door. And if you're not home, they don't have to know you're not home. Sorry, I'll turn the audio off. So this is a great piece of technology for a whole range 
of reasons, and it also has motion detection. So you can set it to actually cloud record. You could remote into it and see what's going on outside your doorstep. So it's really, really handy for someone who is not extremely mobile for a, a range of reasons. So also, on to the next range of technology. The Wi-Fi switches are becoming very popular. And they're becoming more slender too, which is great. These plug into an outlet, and now they're much more narrow, so you can put two into your standard outlet and control different devices. Because you can see there's a port on the side where a device could plug into it. And a lot of these devices are app driven. So basically, you like with the ring doorbell or with this smart switch, you plug it in to, and then you download an app to your tablet or smart device. And then you just follow the on screen step by step instructions. And you will be able to then control things with these outlets, like a lamp or um, a space heater or a, um, a fan. And I'll actually demonstrate that in a few minutes. So that's the switch, the Wi Fi switch. And they actually just started making, these are relatively new pieces of technology, a wall switch. So you can actually replace your existing light switch with this Wi-Fi switch and then you'll be able to control your overhead lighting and dim your overhead lighting with a smart device with uh, an Echo, Siri, with your voice and that gives you complete control of your overhead lighting and this is very recent. I used to demonstrate the Echo uh, over the last year and people would always ask, well, how do you control the above overhead lighting? And that was a lot more tricky until these started to come out because um, a lot of the, the Philips Hue bulbs are, are like this. They're just your standard, like your 60 watt old fashioned light bulb as far as the shape goes. But this is actually a smart LED bulb I'm holding in my hand that will also allow you to, this has kind of a built-in Wi-Fi capability. In the you, light bulb. In the light bulb, yep. You plug this or you screw this in like your standard light bulb and then go to the app, download the, or follow the instructions, find the light bulb and then you'll be able to control it with your wow. smart device or your voice. And iDevices makes I, I believe they're the only ones that make this. This is an actual socket that you could screw any kind of light bulb into that has the standard light bulb screw. So then that will allow you to Wi-Fi control a whole range of different sorts of light bulbs. And I believe this is an LED light that kind of goes around the top of it that uh, you can also use as like a night light. And it also has its own capability functions with those lights that are already built into it. And there is a wall outlet now that you can replace your standard wall outlet with. And it gives this Wi-Fi capabilities. All of this connects to your Wi-Fi, your existing Wi-Fi. And then that will allow you to control things that you plug into it if you don't want to have a bulky switch sticking out of your outlet. And these are fairly new as well. So actually, I'll demonstrate a couple of ways you can control these things. Um, actually, you can do it with your smartphone, for instance. If I wanted to turn on, we have a lamp right here next to us on the table. If I wanted to control that lamp, I basically go into the app and then I can find the device and turn it on actually just like that. And you can do this with your smartphone whether you're home or in Jamaica or Fiji. You can open your app and control and believe me I did when I first installed it just to kind of mess with the people here at the Need Center. I had a lot of fun with this technology when we first installed it. But yeah, you can uh, say you, you're not sure if you turn a device on and you're at your job. You can pull it up. It shows the list of your items that are installed. You just push the button and it turns itself on or off remotely. 
And then you have the capability to, con to integrate it through the Amazon Alexa app, which will allow you to then voice control this stuff, which I will demonstrate now. So basically, the uh, Alexa technology is basically like a Siri. It's a voice control technology. But it's unique because it's, and that's going to happen a lot because I keep saying Alexa, and that's the wake word. Once you say that, then she starts listening for commands. So when you say Alexa, then you give a command or ask a question, and she'll do whatever you ask her or answer your question. So, so basically, she's also, a, or it's also, I always refer to Alexa as she because she's a, a female name, but it's actually, you could change it to echo could be the wake word, or I think computer. So a few things you can do with Alexa or echo, and it also comes in a smaller form, which is the upper portion. That's called the dot. It's much less expensive. I'm not sure what you meant by it. And it, uh, it just doesn't have the Bluetooth speaker. Alexa is now also uh, in your iPhone through the Amazon app, rivaling Siri, also in smart devices, appliances, and now Ford is implementing Alexa in their cars. You can now go, I'll, I've done this on the previous episode, but I'll go ahead and breeze through real quick what you can do with Alexa. I actually have smart with controlling smart devices. For instance, once I have the Wi-Fi switches installed on this technology here, so then I could say, Alexa, turn on lamp. Alexa, turn on lamp. Okay. There was a box fan here. Alexa, turn on box fan. Where did it go? It's behind us. You'll, you'll feel the breeze, trust me. Alexa, turn on box fan. Sometimes it takes a second. I hear it. It's on. Alexa, turn off box fan. Okay. Alexa, turn off lamp. Okay. So that really allows a lot of independence to be able to control a lamp, a fan, and, and things that some people with mobility issues just aren't able to do without voice control. And also, these Wi-Fi switches can be set to randomize, which I've heard from people I've demonstrated this for, that some people that are completely visually impaired and can't see at all actually don't use lights at all in their house, which can be unsafe to some degree, but this kind of solves that issue to where they can randomize the lights in their house to come on and off automatically so that people passing by always think that there's someone home. And also, at Guide Dog School, we're taught for anyone who does not have any light perception that while we do not have any light perception our guide dogs actually do like to see in fact that's their job so we shouldn't leave them in the total dark at night we should turn lights on <laughs> and off in our house for them they like to have light on when they eat if you know so it's that and i have friends who are like but i don't know when it's on i forget when my light's on i forget when my light's off and so this is a really good solution for that for someone who's who's blind absolutely Okay, so I'll go over a few of the other things that Alexa can do really quickly. Um, you can control your television with Alexa. With, uh, you have to buy a Harmony Hub that's made by Logitech, and then you can have infrared capabilities to turn on and off your television. You can control a smart thermostat, which we have two here. They're actually mounted on the wall behind me. And so you would have a specific command. Actually, it's just like anything else. You install the technology, download the app, follow the instructions, and then say, Alexa, change smart home temperature. Alexa, change smart home temperature up two degrees. Sorry, which device did you want? Alexa, change smart home temperature up two degrees. Sorry. I couldn't find a device or group name change smart home temperature of two degrees in Nate's account. Sorry, that's, it's, I, I think I unplugged and plugged it back in, but it was working before the show. If everything would have worked perfectly, I would have been surprised. But generally, you just say, Alexa, change smart home temperature to 72. Alexa, 
change smart home temperature to 72, and then the temperature will change. It actually worked right before the show. Uh, there's a ceiling fan you can control with Alexa. There is a spell door sprinkler system. Actually, this is something that's pretty unique to my devices. This is an outdoor switch. It's all weather. So you can control with your smart device and Alexa by voice control, your outdoor lighting, anything that's powered outdoors, this switch will power it. Um, so other things you can do with Alexa. Um, she woke up. You can... Uh, have Alexa find your phone if you're like me and you lose it a lot. Alexa, ask Tracker to find my phone. Your phone was last seen today at or somewhere near Meet Center at Oak Hill, 51 <laughs> Coventry Street in Hartford. Shall I ring it for you? Yes. I have asked your phone to start ringing. So hands-free phone retrieval, which is Great. So now I have to turn this off because <laughs> it won't stop until you find it. There we go. So that's through the tracker app. You can listen to music through Alexa. 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 Play Pandora. Getting the last Pandora station you listen to. Easy listening radio. It's playing a little low. You might not be able to hear Alexa, so I'll have her turn the volume up. Alexa, volume up. Alexa, volume up. Hello. Only miss a song when it starts to snow. Alexa, Only know you skip song. I, like I could have. I know. I could have told her thumbs down, but I really. That was a great song. And you can. Control it just like you would Pandora by saying thumbs down, thumbs up, volume up, volume down, skip song, change category, Alexa, stop. <laughs> A little abrupt, but um, you can uh, also use uh, use it with your Amazon Music account. You could use it with uh, iHeartRadio and Spotify. And basically, the cool thing about the Amazon Music account is that you can basically request any song by any artist and you can even a cool thing with that too you can even say I don't want to say it but say echo uh, play that song that goes and then say the lyrics and Alexa will search through the musical so all the songs with those lyrics match it up and play that particular song you can stream podcast uh, play radio stations Alexa play NPR New England Public Radio on TuneIn. Streaming of New England Public Radio. And then you can stream by you. particular Hello radio stations. Coaching Alliance. Alexa. Personal and professional. Stop. Of course, you could use it just as a Bluetooth speaker and stream anything you want to through it. Um, you can also play audiobooks, say, through your Audible library. Uh, Alexa, read The Secret Garden. The Secret Garden, presented by Audible. So yeah, this is through your Audible account. Alexa, volume up. So it's actually reading this book with the uh, author's or the narrator's voice. And of course you can skip. And uh, Alexa, stop. And then the really great thing that I love demonstrating that is very unique to Alexa is Alexa's ability to dictate a text-based Kindle book with her voice. Alexa, read a Kindle book. Resuming your most recently added book from Kindle, here's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Did you know Audible has audiobooks performed by Kindle? Of course you have to listen to an ad from time to time. Audible.com. The first listen is free. Kitty has no discretion in her coughs, said her father. Alexa, she time volume down. I do not cough for my own amusement, replied Kitty fretfully. When is so Alexa is actually reading a text-based book. I, so it is. 
cried her mother, and Mrs. Long does not come back till the day before. So that is so it will be impossible for her to really huge. Him, for she will not know him herself. And a lot of people don't know and Alexa can do this. Dear, you may Alexa, have the advantage of stop. You can manage a list. Say uh, you're like me, and you think of things you need to put on your grocery list, but you never actually do it. When you have the pen and paper in hand, you completely forgot what you needed to put on your list. You could say, Alexa, add milk to my shopping list. Alexa, add milk to my shopping list. Milk added to your shopping list. So then you don't even have to worry about it. You can walk away and forget it. And then when you're ready to go to the grocery store, you say, Alexa, send the list, and then it will be emailed to your device. Actually, she's, the reason I have to kind of lean in is because my back's Sorry, to the device. The to the so that's question. why I kind of have to face her or face the device. <laughs> <laughs> you can set alarms and timers. Uh, say you're in the kitchen, you want to cook your macaroni and cheese for 10 minutes, say set the alarm for 10 minutes and it will go off. Or um, if someone is visually impaired, that is actually a talking clock we have in here. Hopefully you can hear that, but it also gives the outside room temperature. It comes with a separate sensor. And speaking of separate sensors, our smart thermostat comes with a separate sensor. And you can put up to 32, I think it's 32 separate. I want to say this correctly, because this is the Ecobee 3 I'm talking about. You can, yeah, 32 wireless sensors. So you can put one in each room if you have one room that's colder than the other one. And he apparently turns, lives in a 32 room house. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll balance out the temperature among the rooms. No, I wish. No, I don't wish. That's a lot of cleaning. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of thermostats, too. Um, so other things you can do with Alexa. I um, want to make sure I cover the cool little things we can demonstrate here. Um, you can manage your calendar with Alexa. Of course, I don't think I said it, but you could, if someone is um, hearing impaired, you could pair your smart lights with Alexa to, it's called uh, IFTTT, which stands for if this then that. So if Alexa's timer reaches zero, your smart lights will start flashing. So someone who's uh, hearing impaired can know when the timer goes off. And you can also do that with something else I'm gonna mention in a few minutes here. Um, actually, I think I'll come back to this because I wanna make sure I cover all the other smart technology. We have so much stuff here I won't be able to cover it in this show, but we invite anyone to come to meet and check this stuff out. It's constantly evolving, and we're constantly adding new stuff. The Nest Protect is really cool. It's the uh, biggest leap in uh, uh, smoke detection in like 30 years. So I don't know if we'll be able to get a shot of it because it's literally right above us, but it looks pretty much like your standard smoke detector. It also has a uh, carbon monoxide detector in it. It's made by Nest. And um, one of my favorite features is that it doesn't chirp when the battery is getting low. Oh, that's fabulous. Yes, and it, uh, it won't go off because it detects steam, which is apparently a problem with a lot of the older smoke detectors. And it's great too because everyone in your family can know what's going on from anywhere because it's also an app that will be on your smart device. So if carbon monoxide is detected or smoke is detected, you will know from Fiji. It um, will flash yellow when it gets its first initial detection of something and just kind of give you a friendly, hey, heads up, carbon monoxide is detected, or heads up, there's smoke detected. And then if it progresses, then the really loud alarm goes off. And of course, you can integrate that in those smart lights too for anyone who's hearing impaired so that lights will flash to also assist someone in waking up. And if you have multiple smoke detectors from Nest, they will communicate with each other. So say you're in the basement and there's something going on in the kitchen, the one in the basement will say, hey, heads up, you might want to check the kitchen, the carbon monoxide's been detected. Uh, it has the most accurate carbon monoxide detecting sensor available today. And a lot of people, I'm guilty, but I need to get one of these so I don't have to worry about it. As far as checking your smoke detector batteries, this actually comes with a 10-year battery, but you can actually get a wired version so you never have to check your batteries. But if you do get the uh, 
10 year battery, it actually checks its batteries and sensors over 400 times a day. So you never have to worry about doing that. You can always go into the app too just to make sure it's working properly. When you turn out the lights at night, it, there's a little LED circle in the middle of the smoke detector that will tell you that the device is working properly. When you turn out the lights, the green light comes on so you know everything's great. Whenever you have to get up, say, to get a glass of water, get a drink of milk, whatever, in the middle of the night, it has motion detection, so it will sense you coming and a light will shine down from the smoke detector and light your pathway. Uh, make sure I'm not missing anything here. So yeah, that's the smoke detector. And when I first bought that, or when I first recommended that, I'm like, yeah, that'd be great, but can it really be that interesting? And my goodness, it is. And it works with VoiceOver, which VoiceOver is a built-in accessibility through your iDevices, which dictates what's on your screen. Oh, that's amazing. It is a great built-in feature, and I love Apple. Apple's been on the forefront of a lot of accessibility and having it built in to their software. And so I know we have actually tested at, at, at request of someone that if this detector goes off, will VoiceOver dictate on the Apple device not only that there is a fire or carbon monoxide, but in which room it's in. And so when you install these, you name it. This is actually called Smart Home. And we tested it. We took it out in the parking lot very safely, set a fire, <laughs> and it actually went off. And uh, Steve's, Steve has uh, his, uh, our blind vocational manager here at the Need Center. It actually went off on his phone, and it worked perfectly. It said fire detected in the Smart Home with voiceover. So that was great. A lot of these things are integrated to work with your iDevices and their capabilities. So yeah, and we, we have a lot of great things here. We, uh, this is, we actually have it set up as like a smart apartment. So we have ways to drive things with your eyes, with your voice, and we have a lot of things that I unfortunately won't be able to get to today, but, and we have more things on the way so, uh, Do you hear him pitching for his next show? I hear this coming. I always fly. I, I know. Can't believe it's so there's a couple of news. really quick things I want to get back to from our first show. Yes. Um, one of the most amazing things about the Echo, if I'm remembering correctly, and I actually I know I am because I have it at home, there is no monthly charge uh, service fee for having the Echo. So a lot of people say this is the most amazing thing, but how much is it going to cost me every month? Like my cable bill and my phone bill and my this bill and my that bill. Once you've purchased the device, there there is no fee to use it. You have your Wi-Fi, so you've obviously got your internet bill. But aside from that, there's no fee. And that's a really amazing thing because this is a huge jump in making this level of accessibility available to people with disabilities at not even a, barely a price at all, never mind a, an exorbitant price or a monthly access fee. Yes, to be able to do what Alexa could do with voice control, before this technology came out, which is fairly new, like a couple years at that, it was thousands of dollars to be able to control your environment the way that this technology opens up the availability to do. Which means that someone with a disability that may have meant they had to live in a nursing home or some sort of other facility doesn't have to do that anymore. Chris, we're running out of time rapidly, but give us the website or a number to call so if someone wants to come and, and get a, a full-on demonstration, they can. Yes, go. you can go to uh, Oak Hill, O-A-K-H-I-L-L-C-T dot O-R-G slash N-E-A-T hyphen center. That's Oak Hill C-T slash NEAT hyphen center. Uh, and that'll give you our phone number or my email address, Chris Thompson. So feel free to contact us and come by for a demonstration. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for watching As I See It, A Blind Woman's View. I hope you've enjoyed this show and I hope you really do take advantage of coming to NEAT and seeing this. Thanks so much and have a great night.